Hey InfoSec Island, this is Anthony. I'm over at B-Sides in Las Vegas and I'm talking to one of the DEF CON presenters. He's uh, uh, Dan Tentler. He's with uh, A10 Labs. Is that correct? That's, that's right. All right. And you're going to be talking about uh, some interesting stuff that you found about Shodan and what you can do with it right. tomorrow at DEF CON. Uh, give us an idea of what you're going to be talking about, Dan. Uh, well, and so in the light of the most recent things people have been finding on the internet like SCADA connected systems and things like that, I decided to, t to spend a few minutes to try and identify what else there was that was connected to the internet that uh, is questionable or hilarious or sad or what have you. Uh, people have found computers and switches and routers and telco equipment and SCADA devices. At this point, you know, that's a good chunk of the internet, but what else is there? So I'll be uh, discussing some hilarious finds and some interesting things that I've discovered. Uh, everything from traffic control systems to humidifiers to uh, refrigerators and all sorts of crazy, crazy things you can connect to that uh, in a lot of cases are not asking for authentication or credentials in any way. So there's nothing uh, There's nothing uh, blocking you to be able to access these, uh, uh, get into them, oh. mess with them. Uh, what's the scariest thing you found? Um, it's a combination between a six megawatt hydroelectric plant in France uh, and uh, humidifiers whose company has marketing material that claims that they're in the White House. Well, geez. So, <laughs> we'll see. So, uh, and using this open source tool, Showdown, which everybody's pretty much familiar with right now, uh, how difficult was it to track down some of this stuff? Um, it's not hard, it just takes a lot of time because you basically have to step through IP addresses manually to, to visit them. And essentially, you do a search and then you copy paste IP addresses from, from Shodan into a web browser and you look at every one. So, it's one of these things that you stay up until 5 in the morning, and by 5 in the morning, you have several dozen interesting things to research the next day. So, you do that for a week and suddenly you have DEF CON talk. Yeah, there you go. Uh, what, what else are you going to be covering in the DEF CON talk? Um, well, Shodan as a tool, it's, it's, a, it's a search engine and it's available for everybody. Um, it's, uh, there's a paid version of it as well, but it's very inexpensive. I think it's $15 until you run out of credits. So uh, I've paid once and I've never run out of credits. Um, so it's, it's a great tool for defense and offense, for pen testers and for people that are doing uh, things like social engineering engagements or um, doing a full red team sweep of an, uh, of an environment or an organization. Uh, it's immeasurably useful to find things that are not easily identifiable by just pointing a, a, a pen testing tool or a web, a web app scanner or a network scanner at a, a subnet range or an organization's uh, IP addresses that they've registered with Aaron. Uh, it, it's very enlightening to see what on the internet is responding to certain names that it aren't directly connected with the organization. And from the defensive side, it's the same, it's the same thing. Uh, what are your employees, do, if, you're the, if you're the IT guy or the security guy, what are your employees doing that is circumventing policy or putting uh, IP or shared passwords or shared code base or anything like that out on the internet without telling anybody? So um, it, it's, it's, very, it's a very enlightening tool. Oh, definitely. So, uh, would you say uh, some of the stuff that you found out there that you're going to reveal at the talk tomorrow was, uh, are you shocked or is this to be expected? It's hard to say. Kind of both. Uh, for me, it was uh, sort of the shock and awe of, there's a web server on this thing? Why would somebody do that? And then to that end, wait, they put a web server on this thing and then they put it on the internet. Wow. So, uh, it, it's hard to describe. Um, I, I, I suggest if you can if you can get a copy of the video, it'll probably be on YouTube. Uh, watch the talk and see for yourself. And, and what's the disconnect? Why is this stuff ending up connected to the internet? That's a very good question. Um, I'm still researching that myself. A lot of it is is for the sake of convenience. These are control systems in some cases that are designed to allow people to open and close valves and things like that from remote locations. Uh, in other instances, you'll have. Uh, the organization within the business, the business unit that's uh, that's uh, the owner of this thing, um, their um, facilities or their HR or their, in some cases, physical security. So they don't either they don't understand the implications of what it is that they're doing, or there's nobody in the organization that's taken a look at it, uh, or uh, it wasn't in scope for a penetration test if they did have a penetration test. So I mean, it's a variety of different things, but it seems like uh, a place that. Not a, not a lot of people have noticed yet. Sounds like it's going to be a great talk uh, tomorrow at DEF CON. Uh, of course, this won't be airing until much after the presentation. Dan, good luck with it, and thanks for taking a minute to talk with us. Thanks.